how do you plumb this thing together? Well, first you're going to want to start off with your pump. In this case, I've got an 800 gallon per minute pump uh, because I know that's going to be more than enough to get everything going to the level I need, the flow rate that I need. Uh, and uh, with these hose uh, bits and with all the necking down that I'm going to do, and I'll show you that in a bit. So depending on which pump you get, the fitting, what you'll want to do is uh, adjust it so that a piece of three, uh, I think this is five eighths inch uh, pipe, um, hose will fit on it. And what I've done to the end of the hose is I've put a fitting. And what this is, it's just something cheap that you can get at the, um, at the hardware store. Each one of these one to two Y splitters is about five bucks, uh, depending on where you get them. I like the plastic ones because then I'm not worried about stuff leaching in to my um, the water of my system. I've adjusted these two so that they're fully open, and then what I'll be able to do is turn each one of these going to each of my four grow beds so that I get the proper flow rate into each of those. And these are nice because they have, as you might be able to see right here, has a little hole. And I can just take a piece of twine and tie that here to an, the nice hole that I've got here in the edge of my grow, uh, of my, excuse me, my sump. I have two of these that are made up I believe these are eight feet long. I would cut them to nine feet and then uh, adjust them down from there. And what this is going to do, screw that on. This one here is just going to come up and around and in. And I will tie it with twine at each of these two points. One note is when I arrange these uh, Rubbermaid tanks, on one side the two uh, supports are closer. I like to have the supports that are further apart on the side where I'm going to be fixing my, my uh, hose. And then I've got these two which are cut to about 25 feet long. And I haven't bothered to uh, trim them really much on the edge because I really don't need a fitting on that end. Uh, let me show you real quick how this ends up. So again, I just connect it. And this is going to wander around the other side. And then I've got an issue. I could just lay it in here, except that's where I'm draining out of my uh, tank. And I really want my water to come in on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie this so that there's a gentle arc, so that at no point does it crimp. And uh, if you come around here, you'll see how that is going to get tied. So I'm using this support that happened to come with this kind of hose. And this is drinking water hose. Um, you might have to special order it if you can't just buy this in your local Home Depot. or Lowe's or other hardware store. So they come with these nice uh, non-crimp fittings and this is going to be connected up here or here depending on how you want to do it so that the water at no point is having to do heroics to overcome a crimp. And that will just let in right there. I've got all my plumbing parts lying around in here. And then I can adjust at my central 
um, from my central plumbing place, I can adjust how much flow is going into each one of these grow beds so that I get the flow rate that I want. And if you go with something like an 800 gallon per hour pump or a 1,000 gallon per hour pump, you should have enough excess that if you want to have an initial grow bed or um, strawberry towers or something like that, you have enough capacity to tee off yet another uh, bit of hose to take care of that. Anyway, so I think, I, I know this works because it's been working in my garden for months now, and I believe that's probably the lowest cost adequate option that gives you the ability to throttle your flow and get it to the places where you want.